It's time to get educated on the craziness impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses around the world. Hello everyone and welcome to the program. I'm Katie Petrick joined by friend of the stars and I mean the ones in the sky and the ones in Holly Weird, Mr. David Fiorazzo. As always, watch, comment, share, help keep us growing. Today we're going to go out to Boston, Boston, where a renowned children's hospital has been caught bragging about performing hysterectomies on confused little girls. David, why do we have a children's hospital all about hysterectomies for young girls? Uh, that's a good question. I wish more sane people would ask why? it. Thank you, Katie. You're welcome. Um, so not too far from Boston Harbor, uh, the Children's Hospital touts gender-affirming hysterectomies for adolescents. So now we've got the medical profession going along with the delusion, and Boston Children's Hospital offers what it describes as, quote, full suite of surgical options for transgender teens and young adults. Watch this video. I feel really honored to be part of a, an organization that is this inclusive. Um, you know, the flag raising ceremony was amazing, you know, that we were flying the flag in front of the hospital, you know, loud and proud. And I was in the parade and we had our van and we had it decorated and a lot of people came out and uh, it's just, it's really great to be part of that kind of an organization. So we, we can't be separated into pieces and pods, right? We're all people, we all love children. We're here to make the world a better place. Um, I love it when people describe Boston Children's as a loving, compassionate, caring, inclusive place. Um, th to me, there's no choice. That needs to be what we are every minute of every day. Okay, Katie, we love people and we love children. We just don't love children the way they were born. No, no, so no. Take it away. No, no. Oh, but but we're all <laughs> together. We're all the same. That's exactly what I want someone to say when I need to go into the hospital and have a medical procedure of something done. I'm going to look to whoever's in the waiting room, and they're all going to look exactly the same as me and be treated exactly the same as I am because that's, that's what we're doing here at this hospital. But just listen to the insanity when they talk about how they can perform putting puberty blockers in our kids and they're actually all excited and okay with doing hysterectomies on young girls. Take a look. Gender affirming hysterectomy is very similar to most hysterectomies that occur. A hysterectomy itself is the removal of the uterus, the cervix, which is the opening of the uterus, and the fallopian tubes, which are attached to the sides of the uterus. Some gender affirming hysterectomies will also include the removal of the ovaries, but that's technically a separate procedure called a bilateral oophorectomy. And not every gender affirming hysterectomy includes that, and people who are getting gender affirming hysterectomies do not have to have their ovaries removed. So, right there, what you just saw. Mom and dad, you need to make sure you hit the share button right now on this video because you can no longer find the video we just showed you. Scrubbed. They, they scrubbed it. Ha <laughs> ha. Like, like a medical term, they scrubbed it. They, right? scrubbed, they scrubbed it. it. The hospital scrubbed that video and made it unavailable. Why? Why would you all of a sudden, because it was out there and then all of a sudden news got made about what they're doing and then all of a sudden, poof, the, the video is gone. I don't understand. Why would that happen? Uh, Notice the promotion of the, well, we know why that would happen, Katie. This person promoting this, all smiles. Did you notice the happy, snappy music in the background? She's a doctor. Oh, she's, she's a, a doctor, doctor too. Oh, okay. She's a promoting doctor. Promoting physical mutilation that will permanently alter a child's life. This is so dangerous, friends, and no wonder they scrubbed it. But anyway, we've got a, apparently another video on puberty blockers. Hi, my name is Priya Dar. I'm one of the doctors at the Center for Adolescent and Young Adult Health here at the Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. I wanted to talk to you guys today a little bit about puberty blockers. Puberty blockers are basically a medication that says, hey, let's just put a pause on puberty. Um, and that can be really beneficial for younger kids who have start, already started the puberty process who either might um, go through a lot of psychological distress as they go through puberty if they're uh, struggling with gender dysphoria or for somebody who's saying, hey, I'm not really sure if I feel comfortable in my body or, or what gender I truly identify with. So you heard it there, she's from Pittsburgh, and so we're, we're trying to show you, Mom and Dad, this is happening across the nation. 
in, in the name of science. Mm -hmm. I thought we were all about the name of science, but we're only about the name of science. You if didn't it's use a science, the air quotes. I didn't use science. The, science sorry, yeah, the sorry. science. So this is happening, and, and now they're saying, you know, puberty blockers. Yeah, put your kid on puberty blockers. It's okay. <laughs> no harm will be done. Wow. Except it will be done. And there's more craziness happening. Uh, what about transgender babies and, uh, and all of this nonsense going along with that? A child will often know that they are transgender from the moment that they have any ability to express themselves. And parents will often tell us this. We have parents who tell us that their kids, they knew from the minute they were born practically. And actions like refusing to get a haircut or standing to urinate, trying to stand to urinate, refusing to stand to urinate, trying on siblings' clothing, uh, playing with the quote opposite gender toys, things like that. There is more and more a group of adolescents that we are seeing that really are coming to the realization that they might be trans or gender diverse a little bit later on in their life. So what we're seeing from them is that they always sort of knew something was maybe off and didn't have the understanding to know that they might be trans or have a different gender identity than the one they had been assigned. So that is a, a growing population that they are that we are seeing and that's being recognized as being trans and able to be treated. Mm, yeah, so we're back in Boston again here at the, the Boston Children's Hospital. So if you have children and you live in Boston, please, please don't go there. Mm. Just don't go there. Because wow. what did they do as well? Again, when we were talking about how they scrubbed the video, there's also other information that has been changed. That, that originally, when, when we talk about uh, vaginoplasty. What's that? It, you know, is, it's never the first step in a gender transition. But hey, if, if you're 17, as you can see, age, you must be 17 to 35 years of age at the time of the surgery. You know, if you're deciding you want to have that done, you can. Oh, what? No, you can't now? Wait a minute. What? They changed it? Who's eligible for vaginoplasty? Oh, now, all of a sudden, people pointed it out and poof. And now it's 18 years old. No longer if you're under the age of 18, meaning you were a minor at the time. Interesting how that happens when all of a sudden things are brought to light. The darkness goes into the light. And what happens? Exactly. That's what I thought. You know, I'm wondering if that one year really matters. Oh, it's got to be 18. Now, I know there's legal reasons Just to be... But they're, they're, they're reaching children in public schools with this nonsense. But these are hospitals. They're touting the surgery center as the, quote, first center of its kind in the U.S. in a major pediatric hospital setting. And this is insane. Breitbart News reached out to Boston uh, Children's Hospital, again, not too far from the Haba. And they asked how it justifies performing such procedures on adolescents given the mounting criticisms that they are not fundamentally based in science and they actually do hurt children but uh, so far they haven't heard anything back uh, and and but they also asked how many gender affirming quote surgeries the hospital performed on children in the last year but received no response to their inquiry with all the censorship taking place on social media platforms, we've made it easy to keep up with your favorite content. Simply download the Freedom Project media app in your app store. Get access to 18 new videos a week, plus thousands of archived shows, lecture series, and educational animations. Download the Freedom Project media app on your Apple TV, Roku, tablet, or phone, and make sure you allow for notifications to keep you informed. Pride events are everywhere, and it's not just in the month of June anymore. At Pride Parade in Vancouver in the Kanata, we have children now being celebrated when they decide to come out to the crowds. And uh, by children, of course, I'm talking about a four-year-old named Charlie Danger Lloyd, who's a girl, but according to mom, was assigned female at birth, but from a young age expressed he was a boy. And, and naturally, then that makes means the girl is going to be taken to the Vancouver Pride Parade as she was, dressed in a transgender flag cape alongside of Grammy. And Grammy, of course, was also wearing a, a pride flag as a cape, because we have to wear capes when we go to these things, you know. Uh, in the middle, middle of the street, Charlie Danger decided to fire a blue confetti-filled cannon and come out as a boy. And so there's Charlie with Grammy, 
deciding to go, poof, I'm a boy now, because I let a cannon of paper go. There, there she is. Poof. Luckily, so that's all you have to do. That's all you have to do now right. is just you go in the middle of the street, have a confetti-filled cannon. So are those called confetti-filled cannons? Whatever they are, watch them appearing yeah. in your public schools near you. Yeah, they they're going to they're they're be coming these out. These cannons are going to be in the schools because kids are going to be doing this in schools, not just at pride parades. Well, they'll do it out at recess now, yeah. yeah. That is true. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's got to be outside. Got to be out, outdoors. Must be outside, right. safety. Mom is 27-year-old Elena Burrell, and that's who Charlie was running to. She told the local news that once they closed the road, Charlie strutted out with Grammy, and they faced the sidelines, and after a short struggle, the cannon exploded with blue smoke and Biodegradable confetti. Oh, that's and that important. was the best part. <laughs> that was the best part of mom's biodegradable be confetti. Biodegradable. Has to be biodegradable. So you got to please the environmentalists <sighs> too. And then you saw Charlie ran into mom's arms. And mom said Charlie jumped with joy as the crowd cheered him on. He couldn't believe the love and support he was shown from the bystanders. <laughs> Now, the idea to come out at Pride actually happened after already having a gender reveal to the family, which, what do you know, it happened before Charlie was born, because that's where you do, when and where, you do gender reveals, is before a child is born. But uh, unfortunately, <laughs> during that time, the smoke for the cannon or smoke, whatever the smoke was coming out of, did not work at the time. And so basically what happened is mom said when we told the story to Charlie, he asked for a redo. The Vancouver Pride Parade is where he came up with the idea to do this redo. And so we bought him a smoke cannon and tucked it away for this day. The, the language that is being said here, well, it just makes me giggle a little bit I'm just bit so inside. thankful that it was biodegradable confetti. That's the main thing. That is the main thing. Now, even with the attacks by people who don't think the little girl should transition into a boy, mom said that Charlie began expressing different gender needs at age two. She told family that she wants to grow to look just like daddy and I'm a boy. And mom said that, you know, he wasn't your typical little girl. He would play with other boys and the parents would say he was more of a boy than their own children. Uh, and then she said that by the end of 2021, so Charlie maybe was still three at this point, not quite four yet. Charlie didn't want to shop in the girl section and wanted shorter hair. Mom said he refused to shop in the girl section, but was too nervous to shop in the boys. After lots of expressing his feelings and emotions with me, he decided that he wanted a new wardrobe, so we set out to find our new style. And Charlie got a haircut at Big Bro's Barbershop, a trans-owned and operated ah, salon great. in East Vancouver. Yep. After leaving the salon that afternoon, Charlie was a completely new child. And Mom then said the family and friends have been supportive of Charlie. His choices were not questioned, and he was congratulated, and everyone began using new pronouns. All right, story time here. Story time about Katie. When Katie, moi, was a young girl, I had two older brothers. I did not like dolls. I did not like dresses. I played with G.I. Joes. I had what I called, or everyone I think calls, a mushroom cut, which is just put Charlie's picture up there. Mushroom cut. There's Katie. Age, mm, all the way up until I was about 11, okay? Probably age 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. And guess what my mom and dad did not do? Claim that I was a boy or think that even if I said I want to be a boy or, boy or I want to be like daddy or I, I only played with the boys at recess because I was playing football. I did not want to go play with the girls because, ugh, drama even back then. Am I right? My parents never, ever, ever said, well, Katie, if you would like to come out as a boy, we can fill up a cannon full of blue biodegradable paper and you can shoot that cannon off and come out as a boy. My parents never did that because my parents loved me dearly and knew anything was just me playing or pretending or just not liking something. That's okay. It doesn't mean you're not the same sex that you were born with because of those things and rant. Today's show is sponsored by our friends at MyPillow. Save up to 66% on all items at MyPillow.com when you use the code Dr. Duke. That's D-R-D-U-K-E. Support this show by supporting a great American company. In a 
addition to my parents, if you didn't see the last segment or if you did, in addition to my parents loving me and doing what's right for me, they did not send me to an all-girls school. But hey, it doesn't matter anymore. I mean, there are no girl schools. There are no boy schools. We already know there are more, no more real schools. But we are going to do some pretending. <laughs> yeah, we have some who are pretending. And now the posh schools are joining in on all this fun that we're having here out in the real world. We have an elite school for girls in grades uh, 5 through 12 in Nashville, Tennessee, founded in 1865. And they revealed that they're going to accept biological males as part of their expanded approach to the concept of gender. Oh, isn't that lovely? Can we just read the headline how it really should read for if it w would have been read 50 years ago or 100 or, or 1000 <laughs> or 5000 oh, five. Elite Nash Vegas okay Elite Nashville Girls School founded in 1865 announces Boys are welcome. Go ahead, Kate. Oh, thank you. Yep. Thank you for, thank you. you know what? That was a tighter headline. Yeah. <laughs> you always want to say more with less, and you did a very good job there. I, yes. I applaud you. <laughs> now, we're talking, of course, about Harpeth Hall. Um, you may remember Harpeth Hall. We talked about them once upon a moon because they had decided that they were going to remove George Washington Day back in 2020, you know, because <laughs> racism. George Washington had to boot him out. And s now, because you saw in, in the photo there, why is Reese Witherspoon featured well she's an alum she's one of the alums uh also mini pearl wow remember mini pearl yes back in the day mini pearl she was funny anyway mini pearl and then uh, amy grant amy grant all have been alums and no longer will they be serving such females they're probably not going to be serving anyone mm -hmm. very soon now the school stated that uh, as the world evolves so do our students the concept of gender <laughs> has expanded and deepened over time. That's a new one. The concept of gender has deepened. It has deepened. Uh, we've gotten expanded, but now it's deepened over time. The members of our school community have asked good and important questions about gender inclusion and have looked for greater clarity on the school's practices. And this is probably all because back in March of 2021, there was a student newspaper op-ed that said, while the school claims to support trans students, this support needs to be formalized. Additionally, practices must be implemented to ensure the inclusion of trans students because the assumption that all students at Harpeth Hall are cisgender and female does not accurately depict the student body and ostracizes trans students. And so based on that little op-ed, the students won. They're going to get their way. And then what is it that we actually have in these new guidelines from Harpeth Hall? Any student who identifies as a girl may apply to our school. Identifies is the key word here, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we'll keep harpeting on that. Identifies. Uh, so the hall acknowledges the developmental journey of each student and recognizes that adolescence includes natural searching and questioning about many topics. For some students, this may include the question of gender identity and the desire to identify as non-binary or use they, them, pronouns and it continues they uh, approach gender identity with understanding and open communication rather than with shame one more beautiful thing about this entire nonsense that david just read the school then said that if a student communicates a desire to be identified as male or adopt he him pronouns we recognize that our school being a girl school may no longer be a place that serves that student well think about what they just oh. said All right, before we go, let's start by discussing one of the nation's largest social media companies, Snapchat. The platform, which allows users to send text messages, photos, and videos that disappear after being viewed, has just launched a family control center in its app. Watch this promo. Family Center is designed to reflect the way that parents engage with their teens in the real world, where parents usually know who their teens are friends with and when they are hanging out, but don't eavesdrop on their private conversations. If parents are concerned about a specific account, they can easily report the issue directly to our trust and safety team. They work around the clock to quickly investigate any potential misuse of Snapchat. In the coming months, we plan on adding additional features to Family Center, such as new content controls for parents and the ability for teens to notify their parents when they report an account or a piece of content to us. 
First, parents do not know all of their children's friends, but as the video mentioned, the new edition allows parents to monitor their children's friend list, however, it does not display the messages being sent. Mm. Pew Research says, 41% of teenagers use Snapchat, and more than 90 million Americans have an account. So Katie, are you one of those 90 million snapping away and chatting away? No, 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 no. See, Snapchat is not of my generation. It's the, the next generation. I don't even know what it means to snap or the chat. The chat snap, is that what it's called? Chat yeah. snap? No? Yeah. No? Am I wrong? I think it was just really just to hide messages that you could get in trouble for, and I'm minimizing that. Anyway, next, let's head to a place where sunny days are no longer sweeping the clouds away as Sesame Place in Philadelphia will now be forcing their employees to participate in anti-bias training. Yes, it all stems from a $25 million lawsuit filed against the park, which claims a young girl was discriminated against during a Father's Day meet and greet. Another mother claims a Sesame Street character, dressed in costume, purposely ignored two little girls at the park because they were black. We have a little bit of video here of the incident, and I'll let you be the judge. <laughs> it's kind of weird, though. It kind of like waved. But where do you think the eyes are in that big costume? Anyway, the park initially responded to the video saying the performer portraying the Rosita character confirmed that the no hand gesture seen several times in the video was not directed to any specific person. Rather, it was a response to multiple requests from someone in the crowd who asked Rosita to hold their child for a photo, which is not permitted. The park says it will expand its commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. There it is. By implementing a racial equity assessment and an anti-bias training and education program, end quote. Katie, seems like more people are perpetually offended these days. Bring in the DEI. They're always perpetually offended by everything. But as someone who has been in a costume like such, I've been several different costume in several different characters, most notably um, a Hallmark figurine. So if you have Hallmark figurines out there, I've been in it. I've been the Easter Bunny as well. You can't see in those things. The, the head, exactly. like the, you can't see. So like, unless you're gonna tip the whole body down, right. which you can't, you don't even know what's happening down there. So let's just all be calm about that. I always wanted to be Pluto, but on, yeah. on to the next thing. Speaking of race-driven decisions, the Northern School of Contemporary Dance a self-identified progressive institution has now decided to banish ballet. According to the school, ballet boasts a contentious nature saddled with the wickedness of, quote, white European ideas, adding, quote, most of our ballet staff were trained at a time where divisions in the teaching of ballet were clear and men lifted women. There was a shift to, ladies and gentlemen, over time, but this is still problematic in relation to inclusion of non-binary and trans dancers. Let's take a quick look at this promotional video they have featured on their website and see if you can spot the hypocrisy. Looks like a lot of white people dancing to me. So needless to say, all the ballet instructors have been given their walking papers out. And all ballet students must now find a different school to attend, which, uh, I don't know, which sounds like the best idea yet. But Katie, interesting seeing a dance school destroy their own program to appease the woke. It's what we do now. I just want to know, are the hip hop dance schools next? Are those going to be canceled too? Hmm? Hmm? Good question. Wouldn't they be reverse racist, though, in the hip-hop? Anyway. Whoa, hey, hey, I'm not. I'm just, All right. I'm just, that wraps up this segment, and more to come next time.
Well, I do personally feel like I was sufficiently educated today. How about you, David? Yeah, mm -hmm. a little bit. A little Especially bit. Especially from Boston Harbor. Boston. All right, for all of us here at Freedom Project, stay educated, my friends.